If your cat has diabetes, you know that this disease can be tough to manage. I'm Dr. M, welcome to BMC. Today's video is going to cover a new medication on the market to help us treat cats that have diabetes. It's called Senvelgo. Is this medication an option for your cat? Should you even consider it if you have a cat who gets diagnosed with diabetes? We're gonna cover everything you need to know, so join me, you'll learn something today. There are a lot of positives about Senvelgo when we compare it to the traditional insulin treatment. The wonderful thing about Senvelgo is that it is a once a day liquid medication that you give by mouth. So you don't have to do the twice a day injections of insulin that you would need to do if your cat is on insulin. This medication can be given directly into a cat's mouth or it can be put on a small amount of canned food if it's easier to get it into your cat that way. There is a research study showing that a lot of cats find this medication pretty palatable, which is a good start. In most cats who take this medication, you will see that their blood glucose levels go back to within a normal range in a couple of weeks. Another bonus is that you don't have to refrigerate this medication. This is a big challenge when it comes to insulin because insulin needs to be kept at very precise temperatures. Otherwise, the entire bottle is useless if it gets too warm or too cold. With Senvelgo, room temperature is fine. Another wonderful thing about this new medication is that the risk of low blood sugar is quite low. This is important because cats that have hypoglycemia are at risk for having seizure activity and if it's very severe they can even die from having low blood sugar. Another bonus is that this medication tends to require less monitoring over the long term. With insulin, we need to be doing regular blood glucose curves or better yet, the current standard of care is to use a continuous glucose monitor just to make sure that our insulin is doing an adequate job controlling the diabetes as time passes. We'll discuss a bit more about what the required monitoring is for Synvelgo, but blood glucose curves are not generally necessary for these cats. All of this, frankly, <laughs> sounds a little bit too good to be true, doesn't it? So let's dive into a little bit more information about how this drug works, what cats it might be possible to use it in, as well as side effects that we need to watch out for. The active ingredient in Senvelgo is a sodium glucose co-transporter 2 inhibitor. What this means is that this medication will reduce the amount of glucose that is reabsorbed from the kidneys, and this is how the blood glucose levels will be controlled in your cat. This reduction in blood glucose means that hyperglycemia will no longer be happening, which reduces any insulin resistance that's occurring in your cat and this gives a chance for your cat's pancreas to recover and if it's able to to start producing insulin again when that occurs then your cat will be a managed diabetic cat and if it doesn't control that cat's diabetes then we have a cat whose pancreas is just not able to recover enough to produce enough insulin and in that situation that cat will be considered an insulin dependent diabetic and they will not be a candidate for using Senvelgo. They will need insulin injections. One study did show that around 88% of the cats who trialed Senvelgo were able to have their diabetes controlled with it and then of course the others ended up being insulin dependent. Now Senvelgo is not an option for every cat. It's important to know that. If your cat has had insulin in the past, they won't be able to use Senvelgo. If we have a cat that has chronic diarrhea or frequent diarrhea, they also will not be able to use Senvelgo. Cats that become incredibly sick before their diabetes is diagnosed, or cats that end up having ketoacidosis, which is a metabolic abnormality where the body is producing ketones, those cats do tend to present 
quite sick with a lot of symptoms. In those situations, we are not able to use Senvelgo. We also can't use it if we have a cat that has significant kidney disease because we are relying on this medication to impact the kidneys to help manage the glucose in your cat's blood. The same goes for cats that are dealing with pancreatitis. We need the pancreas to be in good shape in order to produce insulin. If the pancreas is not doing well, then that cat will not be one to consider using Senvelgo in. So essentially we can consider this medication in newly diagnosed diabetics who have not had insulin and who are otherwise doing fairly well health-wise. Of course, your veterinarian can discuss the specifics for your individual cat and let you know if this will be an option for you or not. So let's say your cat does start on Senvelgo. What should you expect next? There is going to be some more intense monitoring for the first month or so. What this involves is on day three, day seven, and day 14, you will end up returning to your vet clinic in order to discuss, but just to touch base on how your cat is doing symptom wise. Are we seeing uh, that they are gaining weight? Are we seeing that their appetite and thirst are returning to more normal levels? How are their urination habits doing? How are they doing overall? Are we having trouble getting the medication in? We just need to discuss all those things and see how your cat is adapting to using Senvelgo. At those visits, we also need to check how the blood glucose is doing with just one measurement. We call this a spot measurement. And we use that little sample of blood to also check how your cat's ketone levels are doing. We need the ketones to remain low or absent in order for your cat to stay on this medication. Then on day 14, we will often end up checking a fructosamine. Fructosamine is a measurement of the average of what your cat's blood glucose has been doing over the past few weeks. If that fructosamine is still quite high, then we may need to look a little more closely into doing a blood glucose curve. After that, if all is going okay, we will check back in at one month after starting treatment. At this appointment, again, we're checking for clinical symptoms, getting your cat weighed, and doing a spot check for blood glucose and for ketone levels. Depending on what the two-week visit showed us, we may also recheck a fructosamine level. After you've gotten to the one-month point, if your cat's diabetes is well controlled at this point, then we will tend to recheck these cats every three to four months. At these rechecks, depending on how they've been doing, we may consider checking a fructosamine level or we may do a spot blood glucose check and then we will also check for any ketones in their blood. The handy thing is that the blood needed for whatever tests are necessary for your individual cat can all be done with one blood drop. So instead of your cat needing to be in a vet clinic all day in order to do blood draws every two hours for a blood glucose curve, we can do a kind of an in and out visit which is less stressful for many cats. Of course, if your cat ever develops symptoms or becomes unwell, you will need to seek veterinary attention promptly. We will discuss a little bit more of why that's so important next. The most common side effect that we see with Senvelgo is diarrhea or loose stool. This is because this SGL2 inhibitor also has some impact on the small intestine. The good news is that in most cats, this diarrhea is transient and it will go away after a few days without needing any medical intervention from your veterinarian. Of course, if it's not resolving or it's getting worse, you will need to work with your veterinarian to get that managed. The most serious side effect that you must be aware of if your cat is on Senvelgo is that there is a possibility they can develop euglycemic diabetic ketoacidosis. Now to understand what this is, I am going to back up just one step and discuss diabetic ketoacidosis without adding in the euglycemic part quite yet. What happens in these situations is that these cats get very sick, their diabetes becomes very unregulated, and their body becomes too acidic compared to what it should be when a cat is 
healthy and normally functioning. In the past, when cats on insulin would develop DKA, we would check their blood glucose levels and we would check to see if they had any ketones. If we saw those things together, then we would know that this cat was dealing with DKA and we would start treatment for it immediately. It's an urgent matter. They can get very sick and they can die if they're not treated. A lot of the times though treatment is successful, especially if it's sought promptly at the first signs of that cat feeling ill. Now what confused veterinarians for a little bit when Senvelgo first came on the market was that we would have these cats who would be presenting as if they had DKA, but we would check their blood glucose levels and they would be very normal. And so we've had to include a new diagnosis because these cats are euglycemic DKA, meaning that their blood glucose levels are still normal because the Senvelgo is working to keep their blood glucose normal, but they have still developed DKA. Now this only seems to occur in cats on Senvelgo who are not able to produce enough of the insulin that their body needs. The risks of your cat developing euglycemic DKA are the highest for the first two weeks that they start their medication. However, if their pancreas over time loses function, they could develop it at any point during their life. So being aware that this exists and is a potential issue is something to know about. Whether your cat is on insulin or Senvelgo, DKA is something to keep in the back of your mind if they start not feeling well or if they start having any problems whatsoever. Don't let your cat get incredibly ill before you seek veterinary attention. Now the treatment for euglycemic DKA involves hospitalized care. We put these cats onto IV fluids. This is because they need help with rehydration and they also need help regaining a normal acid-base balance. Through that IV, we also have to give them quick-acting insulin. This is crucial to monitor very closely because these cats already have normal blood glucose levels. So we tend to also need to give them additional glucose to prevent them from having low blood glucose, which as I mentioned earlier, risks things like seizures. We also have to stop Senvelgo in these patients and they will not be a candidate to go back onto it later. If your cat has developed euglycemic DKA, they will be an insulin dependent diabetic and that's what you will need to use for their treatment going forward. Of course, euglycemic DKA is a little bit scary. However, the key is just that you're aware about DKA and diabetics. That's the main point here, so that you know what to watch for if your cat loses their appetite, if they become lethargic, tired, if they start vomiting, if they just are moping around and not acting like their regular selves, that should prompt you to see your veterinarian or an emergency clinic if you aren't able to get into your GP vet. Overall, Senvelgo is an exciting development in the world of feline diabetes management, and I am so thrilled to have another option to offer to patients if we are diagnosing them as a diabetic cat. The more tools that I have in my toolbox, the better. Now, if you have a topic that you want me to cover in a future video, please comment it down below. I love to hear from you. If you've used Senvelgo or if you have a diabetic cat, I'd also love to hear from you. We do put out a new video most Fridays and I can't wait to see you in the next one. All right, bye. Senvelgo is not an option for every cat. It's important to know that.